This episode of Knuckle TV is brought to you by the Hitoki Trident. Visit Hitoki.com today to get your state-of-the-art laser combustion smoking device. Yeah, 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 it's your boy E3, son of the legendary godfather, gangster rap, Eric Easy, right? And yeah, you rockin' with Knuckle TV. You know, we rich and ruthless, baby. Once again, Knuckle TV. Rich and ruthless, baby. We choose to keep it real. Really, though. What's up, guys? It's your girl, Jess, and you are watching Nuggle TV. And today we have a very special edition. This, guys, is going to be starting at the grassroots level. We're going to talk you through the humble beginnings of Nuggle, what we were, what we are now, and where we're going. And to do that, we have CJ Malone, CEO of Nuggle. Say hello, CJ. How you doing? And we have Eric Little Easy E to my left. Say hello, Eric. How you guys doing? How you guys doing? And I'm super happy you guys are here because I think that... We've got a lot of new listeners, and we've got a lot of new uh, pe people that are brand new to Nuggle, to Nuggle TV, to Nuggle Magazine. And with that, there's some confusion, I think, as to exactly what we are now, because it's very different from where we came from. Would you agree? That's true. That's true. We're evolving. We're evolving. So so I'm going to start with you, CJ, um, because this is going to very nicely evolve into where you come in. So can you tell me— or for the viewers listening right now, um, where did where did Nuggle start? Because it's 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 not what it is now. Nuggle actually started. Gosh, the the I'm going to say the Nuggle 0.0 was in 2014 during the black market days, and uh, a group of us that all kind of have a technology background started a search directory. You know, there's only one other one out there. Um, we launched it. We all owned a restaurant together in Hollywood, and Nuggle lived above the uh, restaurant. So it was crazy times, <laughs> awesome. to say the least. <laughs> anyway, through the black market days, Nuggle lived. It uh, Then it died. It kind of went on hold as the industry was becoming legal and evolving. So we relaunched Nuggle in 2017 and brought it public. The original business plan was a search directory that catered to all types of businesses, including the ancillary businesses, not just dispensaries or brands, but if you're an investor or somebody creating bags. So as we've seen the industry evolve and become more sophisticated, I think at our peak, we had about 550 business types on the software. So the best analogy I can give, we were kind of the Yelp of cannabis. Right. And there was a big need for that. And there wasn't really a place for cannabis companies, especially the ancillary ones, to market and, uh, you know, grow their business, especially online. Google, Apple, all these platforms, even today, they're still not cannabis friendly, even though they claim to be. Um, that was really the core competency of the business. As we started to grow, what we found is these companies, as they became more sophisticated, needed help marketing. They didn't have a marketing manager. They didn't have a marketing strategy. They didn't have a marketing budget. And Nuggle was born from a consulting technology and marketing company. So we started doing that. And we started coming up with marketing campaigns. And then we got into the multimedia side of things. We bought two magazines, learned how to go to print really quick. We built our own ad server, uh, and we would come up with a marketing strategy for these companies. And then the business profiles kind of tied everything together. Then, uh, as we kind of learned how to do that and what was important to the companies out there, and, you know, obviously brands and dispensaries are kind of the base of the cannabis industry. Um, you know, we really fine-tuned our messaging, and we started the podcast, and we found our niche, and our niche was really speaking to the people that walk into a dispensary and, you know, at that level and not, you know, kind of getting too big into, you know, what state's going legal and things of that nature. Company started to go viral. We were doing great. COVID hit. And, uh, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and I think we were probably the biggest print magazine uh, in California at the time. But we kind of, you know, we took that time to do a lot of the uh, compliance on the software we built what now is Nuggle TV, and, you know, we built that not really knowing what direction that was going to go. We also have our uh, our other companies, you know, that we work with on the product side that Little League can get into a little bit more. So we got to look at things from a holistic picture, from the product side, the marketing side, the software side, 
And then I think today, um, you know, we're going to really focus on the video and adapting that media and getting the messaging out to, you know, what we call the new normal. Today. So going from <clears throat> going from essentially a, a tech company that catered to the cannabis industry and ancillary companies to becoming a what really is what really has become especially it's in this last year a full scale marketing advertising media agency for cannabis industry not just not just dispensaries but the entire cannabis industry. So how do you think that that's going to evolve in the next let's say year and then the five year scope? Well, I think the biggest thing is when you talk about the cannabis industry, what does that mean? And I think using a brand is probably the best analogy. If you look at, you know, when you were when you're buying weed five years ago, you either wanted sativa or indica. <laughs> right. You know, that was it. <laughs> and then you would see these kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, a copycat brand would right. come out, you know, and it was a, a play on Tabasco sauce or something like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was a brand that lived in the regular industry that was now trying to make it in the cannabis industry. Um, you know, Rich and Ruthless Cannabis is probably one of the first lifestyle cannabis brands that isn't really held hostage to any one given strain. But I think that in large part is due credit to the industry evolving now. And it's not about just putting a logo and a business card together. It's selling that lifestyle. I think when you say cannabis, I'm not too far away. Closer to you. The cannabis industry isn't going to be the cannabis industry anymore. It's going to be a cannabis lifestyle industry that's yeah. not really just, you know, combined to people in the cannabis space, right? And how big is the cannabis industry right now? Right. Everybody smokes weed. Yeah. Well, much. and I think an important part of, of what you just said about that cannabis, the way I like to say it is cannabis friendly, but not cannabis focused. So... There's a lot of companies out there, health and wellness lifestyle magazines, um, yoga studios, I mean, you know, fitness moms, you name it, and they're cannabis friendly, but not cannabis focused. So without having to edit that part out of their lives, they can read a magazine about something cannabis or something health and wellness related. And if it has to do with cannabis at some point, no, it's no nobody's going to get offended, you know. And I think that with Garden and Greenhouse, for instance, we've gotten that niche very nicely because, again, it's cannabis friendly, but not cannabis focused where it's not about the weed industry per se, but if there's a yoga studio and they're applying CBD and using hemp wood flooring and, you know, all of those kind of things, it works very nicely with the modern market. You know what I mean? Yeah. So let's kind of talk a little bit about um, Rich and Ruthless and that play. How did you two kind of meet each other in the first place? Because I know that kind of goes a little <laughs> bit. There's a, there's a history there. We got a, uh, well... Um, me and CJ, well, yeah, okay, now you cross into the brand. Uh, me and CJ are partners on Rich and Ruthless, you know what I mean? Of course, we have partners as well in uh, Baltimore, right? That's correct. And that was our, um, first and foremost, it started off as our, our entertainment company, you know what I mean? And uh, kind of like, you know, entertainment production, you know what I mean? It's just starting off with me and my... If I may interrupt you really quick, before you kind of get into where you guys are as a partnership today, for anybody out there living under a rock that has no idea what Rich and Ruthless is, can you tell us what Rich and Ruthless is, like where it come, came from in the beginning? Because, I mean, I doubt anybody that's watching doesn't know, but if anybody there does, let's fill them in. That, that's where that's where I was going. Okay. All right. All right. That's where I was just, going. Just, just wanted Richard, to make Richard, sure nobody's Richard assuming. Richard started as, as as an entertainment company, and me and CJ are partners with uh, Big A, and as well as um, uh, some partners we have in Baltimore, like I was saying. And um, we started off there, and we're just kind of focused on an entertainment company. My career, uh, my EP, my brother, uh, baby Easy, and you know, just kind of just just small family, you know, connected, and. With CJ, you know, having different business ventures itself is where we came into play with Nuggle. And we came up with, a, you know, kind of just like off the limb, you know, idea to sit here and say, hey, let's go ahead and get into the, can you know, medical marijuana world. So we started, we took our, our company and we sat here and made that the name of our brand, which is Rich Ruthless, you know, cannabis, you know what I mean? And our, our slogan, our, our motto is the evolution of hip hop and marijuana, which like he said, everybody does. But where do you get most of the attention to smoke it? When you listen to your Bone Thugs and Harmony, you know what I mean? Your Snoop Dogs, you know what I mean? Uh, your Wiz Khalifa, so forth and so on. So... Of course, you know, I mean, that gets a lot of promotion for everybody to entertain themselves with, you know, trying it. And then, in fact, of becoming legal, we got into the legal side of starting our brand. And during the pandemic, our brand was probably one of the top number one selling brands. We're in 92 dispensaries. 
Um, we we cater to the you know the connoisseurs. We cater to the patients. You know what I mean? Um, you can pretty much you get a bang for your buck dealing with Richard Ruthless. You know what I mean? We kind of utilize everything that came to came with our background, being my father's sons, and the legacy of just you know kind of like that that legalized hustling. You know what I mean? Right. So therefore, we kind of got out there and catered to the customers. You feel know what I mean? So that's where we won. You know what I mean? Is how we you know what I mean our our our. our you know, market value, you feel what I'm saying? And and what we produce, we know we got high THC valued, good, you know, kind of sewer friendly, you know, outdoor read, you feel what I'm saying? And it kind of like took off. So that's how me and CJ connected. And we kind of just been blooming from there. Nuggle was his company that he had actually introduced me into and kind of taught me about, you feel what I'm saying? Tell me about your line really quick. So, so in Rich and Ruthless, what exactly do you guys offer? Oh, we're just flower, you know what I mean? We're just flower as far as right now. Um, with different ventures that we have going on and different uh, different things that we have that successfully going on, we're going to, you know, kind of cross over into a gold line of Rich Roofless, which will be indoor flower and, you know, hopefully that we get into the concentrates. But right now, our first start off was just flower. Yeah. So like CJ said, we have a, a variety of range of different flower um, and different names, Compton Gas Station, you know what I mean, uh, Compton Greenleaf, you know what I mean, um, uh, what is it? Uh, we grow more weed in Compton than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it comes with the whole. <laughs> That's a lot to branding. say. Branding. Yeah, it comes with the whole branding. So you know, of course, you know, the simple thing with uh, our distributor was when he was getting different flavors is coming up with the names of those. So therefore, we just kind of kept it simple. You know, what I mean, it come from our our nature where we come from, of course. You know, Compton, California, and 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 just go ahead and down the line uh, to 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 name them so forth and so on up there. What are some we, of your favorite names? Oh man, uh, mine's was uh, I think the Compton Gorilla Glue. <laughs> <laughs> the Compton Fire Station, you know what I mean? Which I like which that. had different names, and then everybody looks at it and said, "But I want you to go out there and purchase your Rich and Ruthless of that name." But it can be a different flavor, you know. Most of them are kind of, you know, be a light gelato, you know. What I mean, some will be, a, you know, high in indica, you know. what I mean, so we'll, you know, we just have different flavors on flavors, you know. what I mean, uh, giving credit to the our distributor and our growers, you know, that we keep kind of, you know. Yeah. So you know, that's that's us. You feel what I'm saying? And like I say, you in any dispensary you go to over Southern California, 92 of them, you can walk in and you feel like you're gonna get a bang for your buck. You know, what I mean, I was just in Blaze Utopia, and somebody said, "Hey, you know, I I don't have too much to spend." He's like, "What are, what are, what do your grams go for?" And I was like, "Hey, well, you know." Matter of fact, why don't you just, you know, just go ahead and try it. He came over and I gave him a free shirt and all that. And he says, wow, I didn't know how much, uh, you know, you know, how, you know, inexpensive this was. And it's actually great product. You yeah. actually beat out the individuals that we, I don't want to say their names because we don't get cocky. <laughs> you know, he beat out an individual that I was coming here, you know, purchasing myself. And shout out to Blaze Utopia, you know, I mean, one of our number one sellers as well as Remedy Room. And, you know, but we could go down the line to, you know what I mean, uh, Canna Harbor. And we're just in plenty of dispensaries. All of your high-end ones, you know, some of the cookies and Maywood, uh, some of the green thumbs and some of the lemonades to your, you know, your normal mom and pop stores. You know, Richard Rufus has kind of set his stone and, and put his name out there and his brand uh, with our brand in, um, in the cannabis industry. So let me ask you guys then, what are you guys doing together right now? Um, I know that, I know that, well... Doesn't matter what I know, because both the viewer knows or not. So what are you guys involved with together, Rich and Ruthless and Nuggle, today? You know, I think we look at everything kind of holistic. Uh, you know, the last five years has been challenging for everybody. And I think one of the reasons that we've, you know, survived and we're healthy is we, I don't want to use the word commingle, but uh, we leverage these different businesses to help, you know, and it's it's a big family Uh you know, the Rich and Ruthless studio is right there. The Nuggle studio right. is right on the other side of the wall. So that helps. And then, you know, Rich and Ruthless teaching Nuggle a lot about the product is going to have a big play in what we, Nuggle does in 2022. Um, you know, being down in COVID, we uh, recorded a ton of music. Uh, hopefully that we can get out, you know, when the time's right. And uh, so that's going to be exciting, too. So I think, you know, the best analogy with all the technology that we built, all these new media assets in Nuggle getting ready to expand the Rich and Ruthless line on a skew level and getting into other states. It's kind of like, you know, we pulled back, you know, this big slingshot and uh, it's going to be a timing issue and there's no rush. We want to do everything the right way, uh, you know, position every product the right way and uh, make sure we're um, adapting you know, right. to the changes because it's still it's still a mess out there. I mean, it's still the Wild West, really. It's, you know, it's, it's the Wild West across all fronts. 
from the ancillary, ancillary companies to, to the advertising world, to farming it, to selling it. I mean, it's all kind of still up in smoke. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so now, when was Snuggle taken public? 2017. So in 2017 to now, what has been the progression of the uh, cannabis industry as is in the stock market? Because that has been... It has been a volatile time in the last few years of in, in cannabis in stocks. Um, it's just, uh, I would say, you know, most of the publicly traded cannabis craze that really took off from like 17 to maybe 19, that's over. And, you know, there's probably been three or four resets during that period on the publicly traded side of things. Uh a big percentage of those companies are gone. Um, it's not a bad thing, but it's a it's a readjustment period. I think investors now that are buying cannabis spot stocks are doing it from a much more informed perspective. Right. Uh, I think the companies that are publicly traded, you know, that are raising money and doing all these things, are doing it more responsibly. Right. There was just an insane <clears throat> amount of. Um, false evaluations of businesses out there. And, you know, I don't want to name anybody by name, but, you know, the value of your business should be based on the revenue you're generating as a company. So I think the the fundamentals of business, the kind of a conservative approach on the cannabis side is going to be, you know, what takes us through 22, 23, maybe into 24. And, you know, for us, that's good, um, you know, because we're competing with regular businesses now, you know, this whole hype thing. I think it's over. I think, you know, just like the cannabis industry, not just being the cannabis industry, being a regular industry, uh, I think things are just going to normalize moving forward. It reminds me of a lot of like the dot-com boom. Do you know what I mean? Where people Mm -hmm. were making irresponsible decisions. Well, not irresponsible decisions, but just like ill-informed decisions because there was no information yet. It was brand new. And so people were, were pumping money into this thing that there was no background on, there was no history about. And so people just lost their ass. Either they made a lot of money or they lost their ass. And it reminds me so much of what's going on right now in the cannabis industry, because when it became legal, everybody just got so excited. And they said, well, I mean, this is the next big craze and I'm going to put everything into it. And with no history behind it, I mean, who knows what's going to stick to the wall, you know? Um, So that being said, I think that, uh, would you agree that the industry sometimes drives the industry. Like there are certain stocks that have the the stock market value that it has absolutely nothing to do with revenue. Sometimes it has absolutely nothing to do with with the you know quarter project quarter um, the year end uh, uh, what do you call it financials <laughs> the year end financials. Projections. Sometimes it has nothing to do with projections. Sometimes it's just the market driving the market, and it's you know people getting scared, and then people getting excited, and then pumping, and then dumping, and so what exactly is going on with Nuggle right now? So we finally got eight months. We've been working at it. We uh, we finally wrapped up an acquisition with a solid company that's on the product side based out of uh, Jamaica that we've talked mm-hmm. about. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah I'm Kaya, very excited about that. Um, and and that deal kind of came together uh, in an unorthodox, ugh, unorthodox way. Yeah. Um, they, uh, you know, have a couple dispensaries. They're in Jamaica, Uruguay, the Caribbean. Um, Their dispensaries, by the way, are really cool. Mm -hmm. Like, I I don't want to underestimate that description when I say, when any of us say dispensary about Kaya, because they are, the the dispensary is so, it's such a fuller spectrum than we have here in the U.S. It's it's everything from from a, a lounge to a pizza bar to a dab lounge to a music venue to where you buy your product to a coffee house to all of these different pieces, these moving pieces that really is an experiential like venue that you go to. Yeah, they're giving you an example of what uh, what it should know, be like. America should, you know, <laughs> yeah. should be follow like. suit to do. You know, here it's like we go in, we get our product, we leave, and it's all, even though it's legal, it all still feels very like, you know, front of the table yeah. and you know, you're leaving. Yeah. And, you know, in Jamaica, it's just like, damn, they're doing it right. They've got a little plane outside. That. Yeah, with dealing with the company, uh, uh, Yardine in Vegas, one of the biggest dispensaries out there. I asked them, and you know, when I travel to Vegas, you 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 have all these dispensaries, cookies on the strip on Las Vegas Boulevard, you know, mainly you have different ones, so forth and so on. Across, I think cookies is now across the street from uh, the Palms as well, off of Flamingo. Um and you give all this excitement for a tourist to go in there and purchase, you know, medical marijuana. 
But where do you give him the chance and opportunity to to, to consume in what he right. purchases? Right. All these, you know, casinos are, you know, no smoking at all. Right. And then especially if it's marijuana. So, you know, you go outside, you smoke an area, no smoking marijuana. So, you know what I mean? I'm like, man, it's Unless legal. you're a homeowner. You, you know literally I mean? have to be yeah, a homeowner and smoke inside your own home. Yeah, it's how crazy. many people travel to Vegas? To, right. To, 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 like right. CJ just last week to go. They're setting you to up to, to be a criminal. Game, you know what I mean? If you want to sit here and go and say, hey, okay, I'm in town. I don't want to stop at Yardine. I want to stop at cookies. I want to stop anywhere. And and I want to sit here and purchase and and do my do. Where do you give me the opportunity to do that? Right. At? You know, right. so you got to think about it. In America, we need to start, you know, thinking about legalizing lounges for individuals yeah. to, to, to consume, yeah. to do what they want to do. So Kaya <clears throat> is giving a perfect example of what they do in Jamaica. Well, Australia. I think, too, the, the culture and what I've learned from the guys out there, the Kaya crew, the difference, I think, is, you know, when we smoke in the States, you know, everybody's about the biggest bang for your buck, the highest THC account, the most potent product <laughs> out there. When people smoke, it's every day, all yeah. day, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, it's a, it's more, it's almost like when people drink wine in yeah, Europe, they're drinking just, all yeah. day here, you know, we go out Taste hard tested, from yeah. 10 to 2 kind of thing. And uh, a glass is really this much, like for real. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they're going to take a, a hit or two and then, you know, keep yeah. going and going and going. Um, but I think, you know, when we started talking and we didn't really know like how this whole deal was going to come together and the CEO of Kaya, Bali, um, you know, we just started sharing kind of everything that Nuggles done. And then we started talking about Rich and Ruthless and they're huge into the music and the event stuff going on over there. And there were just so many synergies and, you know, then just even looking at their brand, you know, and the way they protect it and their logo and how proud they are. Um, you know, one thing led to another and it wasn't an easy deal to put together at all, especially being publicly traded in the USA and then having to deal with the international laws. I don't even know how many lawyers we have working on this, especially relaunching Nuggle after COVID. And there's just a lot of things that both sides of the fence had to take into account and do in good faith because, you know, what was happening here may not be happening over there yeah. or right. vice versa with uh-huh. just COVID too, because they were shut down for a while. So, uh I think the biggest thing that I'm most excited about, and as we, you know, we're going to have to take a trip back there, is is just you their <laughs> their crew. Yeah, yeah uh, but you heard him. The, their heard crew him. and our crew. It's just almost like a, a mirror of uh, different yeah, people. Bit, yeah. yeah. So I'm most excited about that. That's going to be cool yeah. watching it. But, so tell us about tell us about what the relationship between Kaya and Nuggle is now. Where are we going with them? What exactly does does that partnership or acquisition or joint venture mean? So we're going to do a bunch of things on the publicly traded side. You know, we're still a a U.S. company. We're going to look at getting uplisted in Canada, and there's a lot of logistical reasons on that front too. So we'll be in both. Jamaica is a province of Canada, and Jamaica has its own. Um, trading platform. They have their own stock market, which is kind of really closely tied to the CSC market, which is the Canadian market. So that's- They have their own weed ETF, is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, so that's going to give us a lot more opportunity on a bunch of different levels on this whole international scale. But now, especially, you know, leveraging the success of Rich and Ruthless in the United States, we're looking at doing a collaborative brand and then launching Kaya in California first, and then as Rich and Ruthless grows and Nuggle becomes that media arm in the different states that we have relationships with partners across, uh, you know, in other states, will become a national brand. So just to be clear on that, just to be like, can very clear on if we were to say in one statement, is it fair to say that um, Nuggle is going to be Kaya's American brand partner? Yeah, that's a fair. Uh, wait a second. I mean, Nuggle's... if we're going to say one statement line of Nuggle is Kaya's new, um, like, let's say the American arm, the American leg of, the, the of Kaya. The American leg of right. Kaya. Yeah. Right. And then, you know, Kaya will be the international leg of Nuggle. So then are they going to carry Rich and Ruthless brand line in Every... Kaya and Jamaica and, and, and uh, the Caribbean? We're doing everything from getting the product designed and the packaging out there figuring out some uh, artists to collaborate with and do some shows. And we want to put as much attention on 
the Jamaican market as we do the U.S. market. So are we going to be carrying Kaya's flower lines? Jess just wants to go to Jamaica. I just want to go to Jamaica. Jamaica. No, I just want to make it very, very clear for anybody listening exactly what that partnership means. So they're going to be carrying our line, we're going to be carrying their line, and then we're going to collaborate on the music industry. Even better. And, yes. you know, Big A and I, when we More start talking about business, we got to train our brain. There is no they in us. Yes. It's just us. us. Yeah. That's it. So, you know, the obviously we're physically here in the United States. So we're going to be running everything Kaya, everything Nuggle, uh, you know, growing it wherever we see the uh, best opportunities are. Rich and Ruthless is going to be a huge marketing arm for all those things. And yeah. Definitely. Just like Rich and Ruthless has helped Nuggle, it's going to help uh, – Kaya on the product side. And then, you know, hopefully we're doing a tour and we designed some cool, you know, bags where the top might be the ticket. Who wait knows? a second, wait a second. Okay, let's talk about that, the tour. Oh, most definitely. I'm going to turn to you now. Yes, yes. Tell yes. me about the tour. Oh, well, yeah, the tour is going to be, uh, of course, you know, I mean, um, you're talking about a music tour. Very much a music tour. Yeah. You know, again, we're again, going to Jamaica. You gotta, everybody who purchases <laughs> Rich and Ruthless got to understand the evolution of hip hop and marijuana. Yes. So when you say a music tour, music and everything that we're speaking on today as well. Um, but um, the production side, Rich and Ruthless has kind of grown. So it goes from my, my, my myself, my brother, Baby Easy. Uh, we have uh, the first lady on our label, which is uh, Latoya Lane. We have Kiki Smooth. We have Compton Musa. So we have a, a lineup of individuals that, you know, Richard Ruthless are going to put out on our tour. And, you know, I mean, um, as well as partner up with uh, Dog Pound and Bone Thugs and Harmony as well. Yes. And then again, like CJ said, as well as some <clears throat> artists, you know what I mean, uh, that we are going to brand and work with that are also from Jamaica as well, that Ka- that Kai has, you know what I mean, uh, you know, alliances with as well. Nice, nice. Okay, so when is this tour supposed to tentatively start and where is it going to begin? Like in the Caribbean and Jamaica, is going to start here? Um, That's a good That's a good question. You know, that's something that we're going to kind of cross-reference between us and each other. As like you said, we just actually just completed this venture. So, you know, we're at the groundworks of it and you know, everything is also going to come falling into place. But we're looking to come in there like the springtime, you know what I mean? Where we're going to start first is, you know, again, something to be denounced. Very nice. Yeah, and I think it's going to be fun because now, you know, especially with all the moving parts, we're not held hostage. Just like Rich and Ruthless isn't held hostage to one type of strain. Yes. Nuggle is now a global company. Yes. You know, and software knows zero geographic limitations. Yeah. We're trying to get the app approved through Apple in uh, Jamaica right now, which is a whole other thing. That, oh, there yeah. You go. There you go. That's um, awesome. But, I mean, we didn't even know it wasn't approved. Yeah. You, you just don't think <laughs> about these things. Uh so, and then, you know, when we do the tour and we're doing these shows, especially with Nuggle TV, everything's about content, right? Very so, much. you know, the tour in California is going to be very heavily dispensary driven and very intimate. And this is the plan now. And, and, and this can change. Uh, what we do in Jamaica, you know, it'll probably be bigger venues, maybe festival atmospheres. Very much, yes. yes. There's a lot of uh, potential... <laughs> strategic moves that Team Kaya is making out there on the entertainment side nice. that we can't speak to yet, but that'll lend itself nice to what we're all doing there you collectively. Go, there, you go. <laughs> they're, uh, they're as crazy as we are in a good way, so they're not afraid. Very so. cool. Okay, so <clears throat> lots of different platforms that we have to advertise on, lots of different platforms that we have for media uses. So we've got Nuggle Magazine. We've got um, Kush Talk Magazine. We've got uh, Garden Greenhouse. We've got Nuggle TV we've got all of our social media aspects of things, but can you go through a few of the different media uh, outlets that we have right now? And what are you most excited about? The the easiest way for me personally to get my brain around all the assets that Nuggle has is I always, when I especially talk to a client that wants to advertise with us, how do you tell your story? How do you make it tangible first? And then how does that translate into more sales for your product or your service? You know, when we did the print magazine, that was a big deal because people would walk into a dispensary, they would sit in the lobby, and they would read the magazine. And then it was something that they can take out. You know, now print isn't as popular because people don't want to touch things and there aren't any waiting rooms in dispensaries. Hence, now we have Nuggle TV, which is our own video platform that has live streaming on it, which is insane. So imagine you have your own TV channel and you're a dispensary and you want to live stream what you have for sale that day. Like right. now, now you can do it. Right. But that also complements the magazine in both digital and print. So we have Nuggle Magazine, 
which is our digital and print magazine that will also do things like the Kush stock magazine, or, you know, we can always do different types of publications under that same blueprint. We have Nuggle TV, which I think is really going to be kind of the leader on the media side of what we do, which is think of it as Netflix with a live streaming. Right. Um, you know, we're going to be loading our first out of network channel. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about it, but I'll say <laughs> that for you. And, you know, people can watch videos. It's uninterrupted. There's no censorship ad in any level. We control everything. And all the advertising revenue that's generated, we're not splitting it. So the the clients that are on there, we can share it with people in the industry, yes. which is nice. Um, you know, and then the app is going to always feature business profiles. But I think the app is going to change and kind of be what's connecting all this media and all those companies together so people can see everything in one place. So just to be clear, Nuggle TV. Um, so I am going to go ahead and just say it since you already mentioned it. But um, so Nuggle TV is essentially going to be a live streaming platform where you can put pre-recorded videos like YouTube, Netflix, um, or live streaming where, you know, a, well, you're live. Either way, you know, I like to say Nuggle TV on Fuck With A Bowl because y'all can't cancel us. So which I really like a lot, right? Um, so you might actually be watching this right now on Nuggle TV, which big ups to you. Um, but that being said, so think of it as um, you've got your TV state, you've got your, your TV on, you've got your different stations, and within those stations, you have shows. So a client can come in, and they if they want to have their own uh, their own channel and create their own television shows within that channel, it could be a live streaming channel, something about their brand, something about their background, and they can feature different videos within their own channel. Um, where, and so essentially, you can host your own channel on Knuckle TV free of censorship. And I think that is very, very cool. And I think it's kind of the future of uh, media in the cannabis industry. Well, even look at it in a real world situation. So let's say you're a dispensary. You wake up in the morning, the bud tender does a live. There's a sale or a two for one or whatever it is right? with Rich and Ruthless. Somebody sees that. They walk in the dispensary. They buy a Rich and Ruthless bag. They pull the top off. It happens to be a ticket. They go to the show, yes. turn in their ticket. Their friends couldn't get to the show, but they're live streaming <laughs> and they're watching it on Nuggle TV. Right, right. Right. So everything's commingled. So now we have this platform to where we're heavy into the product side of things. We're heavy into the media side of things. Everything still is unbiased. There's no influence from anything else. We will work with everybody out there in the space. But now it's just about getting content and access to people on both sides of the fence. So what is the future of Rich and Ruthless right now? Like, do you guys have anything coming up down the pipeline? Oh, very much. Like we said earlier, uh, we have a gold, uh, you know, our, our gold line. Um, what is our platinum line? So which is going to be the indoor flower. And and then we're, you know, we're kind of, you know, dabbling in, in a little concentrates here and there. That's going to come in the future. So, uh, you know, sky's the limit for Rich and Ruthless, you know what I mean? So we just, you just kind of just opened up. I think it's going to be fun as we go into new territories, new states. Yeah, very much. Watching, because the industry is so different from when we got in, watching how it grows and, you know, what the market does with the product out there. Yep. Uh, you know, but it's not every day. And like when we, you know, when we do a magazine, we can do a, a Rich and Ruthless magazine that's geared towards the tour. Yeah. Right? With Kaya. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's just more media. Uh, I think those things are fun. How did Rich and Ruthless get into cannabis in the first place? Um, I mean, well, you know, that's that's just part of me and my brother's thing. You know, I mean, yeah, CJ could tell you that boy can smoke up a storm. <laughs> so um, it was always, you know, coming at us with, you know, starting our own line ourselves, you know what I mean? And of not cross-branding it with our father, you know what I mean, or naming it. So we had a lot of connections and ties and and and, and thoughts to do that, not really to take our, you know, our entertainment company and use that name. So that kind of kept us the doors open for a lot, you feel what I'm saying? Which, you know, the you know, the entertainment company represents me, and my partners, uh, me, and my brother, and my father's legacy as the face of it. You know what I mean? So we figure like, you know, we kind of leave the doors open for me and my brother to do that, which will come down the line, you know, with the roofless gold and the roofless platinum. But, you know, just to start it off was just, you know, like, hey, let's let's get into it. You know what I mean? Kind of piggybacking on an, another distribution and and you know, we grew, we, you know, didn't, you know, know the sky's the limit was going to be for us. And it was good to sit here and start it with that because now when you have the Richard Rufus products, you have the different lines that don't have to specifically be us, but they were just, you know, kind of the fire station. 
Compton Glue, right. Compton such and such. And, you know what I mean? So we kept it, you know, kind of clean and thorough and, you know, given the leeway for us to sit there and have our own things to branch off with if it didn't work. And like, like I said, it just did what it did. Well, I mean, kind of being one of the innovators in the industry in that in that regard, because if Rich and Ruthless was one of the lifestyle brands, one of the original lifestyle brands in um, in cannabis, they're the hip hop community, well, the entertainment industry, but the hip hop community in particular, are really the ones that started talking about cannabis out loud yeah. before it was ever legal, before it was okay to do that, mm-hmm. you know, and being the ones that sort of took that leap and started talking about it openly it made it okay for other people to start talking about it openly. Right. And fast forward to, to, to you know, 2022, we got yoga moms like, oh, I smoke weed before I, you know, yeah. before yeah. I take my dog it's to the dog thing. park. You know, it's like it's progressed all the way down the line um, to where now it's it's okay to talk about. And I think that, you know, just being sort of the, the innovators in the industry, it's only appropriate that you're the innovators also in the cannabis industry bringing a lifestyle brand to cannabis in a, uh, along with the hip hop community. So it's very cool. Yeah, very much. It's just a thing to do. Like I said, it's the evolution of hip hop and marijuana. That's our slogan. Um, I would like to touch base really quick on Kushstock Magazine. So what have we got going on with Kushstock Magazine and the physical hard copy magazine um, that we are producing in March? Can you kind of go through that really quickly? Yeah, we did a uh, a Kushstock Magazine published by Nuggle Magazine. It's going to feature all the Kushstock happenings, vendors, events. Yep. Yeah, this is the uh, the brochure for it with the media kit, and uh, we're working with Dr. K, which we're super excited about. And this will be kicking off the first print magazine since uh, COVID. We're on track to break records, which is good. And I think this will be a, an ongoing thing that continues to to live on through it. Most definitely. And I think also one of the cool things that I think we've started to implement when, when talking to different clients and stuff, um, their features in the magazine, instead of just sticking to strictly print, um, adding things like QR codes to be able to download music or download, you know, a podcast or um, send somebody to your website. It really brings a digital version to life. And I think that that's something previously in print that made print sort of ancillary or unpopular and that's kind of bringing it back because now we can bring a digital aspect to a print magazine so that is true that, that is, is true. very cool that is very very cool um so big shout out to dr k kushok magazine kushok uh, festival is coming up april 9th by the way guys so those of you watching april 9th 2022 but it does happen every year at adelanto stadium and that being said i think we're just going to go ahead and wrap it up guys is you guys anything else to say oh you Oh, no. Must leave you uh, also in your magazine. You can find out where you can go purchase in all 92 plus stores of your oh, Richard Ruthless cannabis. Very nice. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, you know, stay tuned for everything that we have coming, Richard Ruthless, from cannabis to the entertainment side of our label. Um, we have some great things coming in 2020. So, uh, 2022. So, uh, either. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and you know, we appreciate the the love and support. You know, I mean, that's what we got. I'm going to throw a couple of shout outs out there. So big ups to Dr. K, big ups to uh, Big A, big ups to Hitoki Laser, the Hitoki Brothers Joe and Jack Tran. Big ups to uh, Hempwood Flooring, one of our amazing sponsors. And um, let's see who else, who else? Kaya. Kaya. Obviously, yes. obviously, but they took about half a segment. So, all right, to everybody watching out there in Nuggleland, thank you so much for joining us. You are watching Nuggle TV. I'm your girl Jess, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.